Hey, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays from Bob here at Upgrade Performance. In my message this year, I thought I'd share with you a couple of my favorite recipes. And I'll share with you the ingredients and then some of the techniques I use to put them together. Okay, so the two things I'm going to share with you today are my Irish soda bread. And the second one is French crepes. This is something that we'll be having over uh, the Christmas holiday. Uh, and we just do it as a traditional thing each and every year. I make it also some other holidays throughout the year. So let's first talk uh, about the Irish soda bread and what the ingredients are. So here's a picture of the brown bread, the Irish soda bread, and I'm actually going to prepare this with uh, something uh, I really enjoy over the holidays, which is prime rib. I'll do another video on that later, but this is what the finished product looks like, not the whiskey included. Now, the one thing about Irish soda bread is it's super simple. It's one of the simplest breads that you can make. Uh, the ingredients are also simple, but all you need is three and a half cups of uh, whole wheat flour, a half a cup of white flour, about eight tablespoons of sugar, uh, a tablespoon or in a pinch of uh, salt, coarse salt, I use uh, kosher salt, uh, two tablespoons of baking powder. And when you do your baking powder, you want to make sure there's no lumps in it. You just make sure you rub it so it's totally smooth. Uh, four tablespoons of butter. Uh, and, you know, you want this to be soft because you're going to mix it into the dry mixture. And then two cups of buttermilk. And I leave it out so it gets to room temperature. And then optional if you like raisins in your bread, but a cup of raisins. Um, so it really depends on what you're in the mood for. Let me share with you a little bit about how you put this all together. So what you're going to want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And in a, a large bowl, you put all your dry ingredients and mix that together. Once you have that together, you'll put your chilled butter in there and just cut it up like you would normally in a, a dry uh, mixture. Once you've done that, you're going to want to add your buttermilk. Um, if you want to, I sometimes add an egg into my buttermilk, but that's uh, optional as well. And then I add about a cup, cup and a half of the buttermilk in there and I start mixing the dry ingredients together. And then I continue to add it until uh, the, the dry mixture becomes like a dough. Uh, it's going to be very sticky uh, and you'll want to knead this, but be careful you don't over knead it. That's going to make your bread tough. So just try to get all the dry mixture mixed in. And once you do that, you want to just create a round loaf uh, of bread. And then what I do is also just put some additional flour on my hands so I can create that round loaf. But if it looks kind of jaggedy and, and, and stuff like that, that's totally fine. But make a round uh, loaf out of it. Once you've done that, you're going to cut across into it. I actually cut almost down all the way through the dough, uh, but this is going to allow it to bake and kind of heat up and cook the inside. I put it on parchment paper on a baking sheet, uh, or you can put it on a, a, sh a baking sheet just with flour if you care to. Uh, you're going to place it in the oven, real simple, about 45, 55 minutes, depending on how your oven cooks. And to make sure it's done, number one, you'll look at the outside. It should look nice and brown. And then number two, you'll just flip it over and you tap the bottom. If it sounds hollow, your bread is done. After that, I just take it put it on a cooling rack for a couple of minutes. And then I can't wait too long because I love nice warm bread. And then I start slicing uh, some of the bread off. We love using that uh, Kerrygold butter. It's got a great flavor to it. Uh, and then if you really want to make it a treat, you can put on some butter and some nice homemade jam. So real simple, uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy. We love it. And I bet you're going to love it too. Here's the finished product. You can see on the top right, that's the brown bread on the cooling rack. And down below is just another loaf I had made uh, when uh, I was somewhere else. But you can see that cross that's in the middle from the top there. Let's now jump into the French crepes. 
Now, we usually start Christmas morning off with our French crepes. This is something we do right after we open up our gifts. Uh, and we make them with Nutella. They're nice and sweet. And we also use fresh whipped cream. Great thing about these is number one, they are simple. It takes only a few minutes to prepare. And uh, all you need is a blender, ideally. You can also use a, a pan and a whisk. Uh, so let me share with you the ingredients you need so you can be prepared to make these uh, someday over the holidays. One of the traditions we have on Christmas morning is after we open up our gifts, we like to sit down and have French crepes. We make them with Nutella and fresh whipped cream. I'll share with you this recipe, super easy to make, uh, and then hopefully you can enjoy this over the holidays as well. As you can see the ingredients here, and I'll put a link down below where you can grab these recipes, uh, but you just need a cup of all-purpose flour, teaspoon of coarse salt, a teaspoon of sugar, about one and a half cups of whole milk, four large eggs, and three teaspoons of butter, and I melt the butter. I put all of that into the blender, and I blend it, and what you'll notice is bubbles start coming to the surface. If you've uh, done that and you know the dry mixture is all wet, you're in good shape. After I blend it, I let it sit for about 15 minutes. In fact, I just, uh, you know, just leave it out and then I might mix it up one more time. It kind of brings it all together. I find the crepes come out even better if you can let it sit for about 15 minutes before you begin cooking it. But once you have your batter in the blender and it's been sitting out for about 15 minutes, I prepare a skillet. Uh, I like to have two going so I can be cooking two crepes at a time, but make sure the bottom is coated fully with some butter. Uh, and you should have it up to temperature. If you put just a little dab of the batter on the pan and it starts cooking, you know it's warm enough or hot enough to begin uh, cooking the crepe. Then you're gonna pour batter into the pan, just enough to cover the bottom with a thin coat. And then you'll you know turn the pan around so you can cover the bottom of the pan. And then as it cooks, you'll notice the top dries. Once that begins drying, uh, you can use the edge of a Teflon spatula and if you can peel the edge off, then it's about ready to flip over. And then you'll flip it over and cook it for another couple of minutes. And then at that point, you should be able to slide it right out of your skillet onto a plate. Uh, while it's warm, you're going to want to apply some Nutella. Man, it's awesome. And then uh, if you like banana, I love to put real thin sliced banana in there. And then we roll it up and put a nice healthy uh serving of whipped cream on top and man it is awesome okay uh, that's what we say in boston it's wicked awesome actually so if you want something sweet uh then we highly recommend this and then yeah hey put different stuff in there you can put jelly in there you can put um you can put peanut butter in there whatever you want but it's it's really cool anyway uh these are a couple of the favorites that we have in our tradition um if you end up using them let me know how you like them uh, with that, you guys enjoy your Christmas and your holidays. I hope it's awesome. And we look forward to hearing from you to see how you like these uh, recipes that we like every year. Until then, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays.